Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the August 2021 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how I made them and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I shared a look at and a link to the August 2021 sheet load of cards. Now, if after watching today's video, you haven't seen that one yet and you want to download the free printable, I do have a link to that video in the description box below. But today, I'm here to show you how I made that set of cards that I gave you a look at. Now, also today, my entire team of collaborators will be sharing their first set here on YouTube, over on their Instagram accounts, or their blogs. Everybody is linked in the description box below. I know that they would love you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. This month's sheet load yields eight cards if you follow the supply and the cutting guides. And let's take a look at the main supplies that I'll be using today. My plan for these cards is to send them out to channel members and subscribers that send in cards for the end of the month feature. So I will be using this crafty simple strips stamp and die set from Tailored Expressions because I thought there were some fun ones here that other crafters might enjoy to get on a card. Now speaking of the end of the month feature, don't forget that there are three ways that you can show us your sheet load. You can do a video here on YouTube, make a post over on Instagram, or you can send in a card for the end of the month video where I share them on camera. I do have a video also linked down there in that description box with the show us your sheet load guidelines. So you can check that out and as always you can let me know if you have any questions. For my focal point behind the sentiment, I decided not to go with a stamped image. Instead, I'm going to use a couple Tim Holtz scribble dies to maybe kind of mimic flowers like you'll see here in a second are on my pattern paper. Now for the ovals behind that, I got out a regular oval and a scalloped oval from my stash. Both of these are old nestability sets from Spellbinders. A couple weeks ago on a set of cards, I got out some craft cardstock and I realized how much that I loved using craft. Years ago, there would be craft cardstock on about every card I created. So I decided today, since the craft cardstock kind of goes with the pattern paper feel, that for my card bases, I will be using craft. I got out four of those that I will cut and fold into card bases. Now for my oval and my sentiment piece, I'm using an off-white cardstock. This is between white and ivory and goes well with my pattern papers. And I'm not going to move it too much, but for all of my mats, I'm using a gold foiled cardstock. Hopefully this won't mess with the lighting too much. Sometimes that metallic does, but I wanted to show you the package that that paper came from. I got this at Michael's. They call it gold foil cardstock paper but it should be like gold foil pattern paper. It's not very sturdy, but because the cards have so many layers, I figured using something a little thinner for the mats was a great idea. I also got out a couple pieces of pink cardstock that I will be using for my flower die cuts, and I thought these went well with the pattern papers. And speaking of pattern papers, these are the pieces I'll be using today. This is actually the front and back of the same piece. And unfortunately, you can no longer buy this in the store. It's Crate Paper's open book. But I know that others have found digital files on like AC Digitals, I think it's called, where you can buy this pattern and you could print it out. But I just recently found this at my local scrapbook store thinking it was new. 
and luckily they just had some left over. Now when I found out it was no longer available, I did go back and I bought like the last eight sheets because I am in love. So this is what I'll be using for my pattern paper pieces. As I get started on the process, I will let you know any other products or tools I bring in. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started today, I'm going to be cutting the pattern papers per the instructions. And if your pattern paper has an orientation that you have to pay attention to, you will want to note that before you make your first cut. Now, because my text paper does, I needed to go ahead and cut that branding strip off of the bottom of each of the papers before I went ahead and made the cuts. Once those had been trimmed off, I then rotate my papers and make that first cut at five inches and cut down the four pieces I need. Now, just like normal, I won't go over every dimension during the process because you will have that printable in front of you. Once those first four pieces were cut, I brought back in the big part that was left from the paper. And just so I don't cut this into skinny strips and make it less usable later on, I want that bottom piece to be as big as possible. So what I do first is cut it at seven and a half inches tall and then cut it down to the four pieces I need. That way I'm gonna have a large piece later left and you'll see what I use that for. Once that first piece was cut into the eight pieces, I then brought in the floral paper and made those same cuts. The next thing I would normally do would be to cut my CS1 for my image and my sentiment, but because I'm gonna be using dies, I just brought in the cardstock that I was gonna use for those, and I trimmed them down into smaller pieces that would fit later in my die cut machine. Now it's time to cut the foiled paper that I will be using for CS2. Like I mentioned before, I will only need three pieces since I will be cutting the ovals from piece B. So you're gonna kind of ignore the cutting guides for CS2, but we will be cutting two pieces the same way. The first cut I made on those two was a strip that was five and a quarter inches wide. And for now, I'm just gonna sit the strip that's left by to the side while I finish cutting piece A. Once both of those foiled papers are cut down to five and a quarter inches wide, I rotate them and cut them to the final height of two and three quarters. Now, because you would need exactly 11 inches for the two and three quarter cuts, make sure that you don't do a quote unquote generous two and three quarters. I always make sure instead of cutting to the right of the black line, that I put it right to the left of where the line is on my cutter. That way, everything is more uniform. Then I brought back in that leftover strip and I'm going to be cutting from each of these two pieces that are three inches wide by four inches tall. That yielded me four of the piece B, which meant when I brought in that other piece of the foil paper, that now I only need to cut four instead of the six it shows. And you can cut this paper however you want, as long as you end up with four three by fours. And now it is time to change gears and do the stamping. I will be stamping all of the sentiments at once onto that off-white piece of cardstock, and I'm going to use Gina K Designs Crafting to do that. Now I use my Misty not only because I do not have a block this size, but this is a brand new stamp, and I figured I would need to stamp it a couple times to get a crisper image. Now you make sure if you have something like this that you do stamp those squares because you'll see later when I go to die cut, I need those to line it up. And speaking of die cutting, that is what I did next. 
I got a couple pieces of scotch blue removable tape to hold my die in place. I was very careful about lining up those squares that I stamped before I ran it through my cuddle bug. Now the cool thing about this is you only had to stamp once and die cut once and then you have something like 20 sentiments here. So I will save the extras that I don't use for more cards later. Using those same pieces of removable scotch tape, I am going to use the scallop oval die to cut out the center of each of the three by four pieces. This again conserves on paper or cardstock, and that hole is gonna be hidden later by the pattern paper piece. The other die cutting that I had to do was the pink card stocks with those scribble dies, but because you have seen probably lots of die cutting, I did do the rest of that off camera. Here is a look at all those pieces cut. I did forget to mention I would be cutting the standard ovals. And also another thing that changed was I only ended up using that bigger scribbles die. I just couldn't get two of those to work. Now on the oval itself, after I cut it, I did run it back through in my dots embossing folder. I just thought this added a little extra texture to that focal point. Now that all of the pieces were ready, I could start putting the cards together. And I did this in an assembly line process, which I will kind of speed through here, but I'll show you the highlights. The first thing I did was put my small pieces of pattern paper on the pieces of foil paper with the oval center cut out. Then I moved on to those strips that go across the center of the card, pretty much just like the previous piece. I put adhesive on the back and then I matted it with that foil paper. Then it was time to get all of those pieces put on the card bases. Off camera I did cut and fold those eight craft card bases and now to get started on layering my pattern papers that biggest strip got adhesive on the back and it gets centered left to right and top to bottom as best as possible. Once that's down I add adhesive to the smaller pattern paper piece and that also gets centered left to right and top to bottom. While I work on putting more of these together, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. I thoroughly enjoy these. I know I've told you that before, but I just wanted to reiterate it. I enjoy learning more about you and sharing a little bit more about myself. Today's question comes from channel member Crafty Days, who yes, that is my sister, and she would like to know, what are some of your favorite color combinations? We would both love for you to answer that in the comment section below and make sure to add the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so we know that you've answered it and would like us to see it. I would say for myself that I know I use a lot of pattern paper, but if I was going to stick to something just like colored cardstock, I would probably go for like a bright pink or an aqua paired up with either silver or gray. Now my other favorite color combination is all of the colors. I am definitely hashtag team rainbow. For the next part of the assembly, I will be placing the embossed ovals centered on those gold foiled scalloped ovals. Once I had all of the ovals together, it was time to get my little scribbles die cuts placed on there. And these are very, very fine. So I decided that I would spray them with my Elmer's Craft Bond. And I do do that off camera just so I don't spray my camera or anything. And you'll see here that when I bring the box back in, they are now tacky on the back and ready to be placed down. To place them, I am just using my reverse tweezers to pick them up and hold them while I figure out where I want it to go on the oval and then I press it down firmly with my hands. Now once I got all of these put together, I did put the whole stack underneath a book, something heavy, for about 5 minutes before I moved on just to make sure that I got good adhesion. Once those had dried a little bit extra, I then placed adhesive on the back of each one and this got centered on the 3x4 piece in the middle of the cards. Now so far my card is very flat and that was for a purpose 
because now I'm going to bring in my sentiments and my big blue roll of foam tape to place those. For today, I'm going to be using my quarter inch wide roll of foam tape. This is the skinniest of the three that I own and it fit perfectly on the back of each of these sentiments. I just placed a strip cutting the end with my nonstick scissors and I went through and did this to all eight sentiments and you'll notice here before I put them onto the card, I do burnish the back of each of these with my fingers because I find that helps the release paper pull off the back. Now these sentiments, you can place them wherever you want on your card. I chose to keep them to the lower part of that oval, sometimes adjusting up and down if I thought it needed it. Now I could have stopped here, called these cards done, but you know that I want a little bling. So I brought in my Elizabeth Craft Designs glitter dots in transparent slash gold. I love how the center of these is see-through and has some glitter on it, but then there's that nice touch of gold around the outer edge. I thought that this matched the gold foil paper on my cards very well, and I placed three, sorry, I placed six of them on my card front, three in two different places. And here's a look at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's cards using the August 2021 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit all of the collaborators. Their links are in that description box below. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.